Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Leo, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good. We're about to kick off episode 29. 29. Of so I was Tech close. Yet. Yeah, you were close. Tech Yet Games podcast. Shit, I, I was trying to guess uh, earlier, and uh, he was making it look like I was way off. He was you were giving me that look of like, what? Turns out I was off by one, but okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, for seriously. Thanks, we appreciate guys. it. Um, so this is normally where I say, what have you been playing? Yeah. I feel like we should like tease what we're going to talk about up here. Like get people. That's a good idea. Get people hooked. Yeah. And we were just having. Get them hooked. Get them hooked. And we were just having a discussion because I've been fighting with people on Twitter for the past two days. Nice. About this Ooblets launch mm-hmm. and the Epic Game Store drama. Uh, so that's coming up later in the show. Yeah. Um, what else do we say we're going to talk about later in the show? There's some good speed running news. Oh, some speed running news. Yeah. We got some hot stuff. Yeah, considering it was a pretty slow week of news, I think I think we're going to have some good stuff. A very slow week of news. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I went ahead and argued with people on the internet, so we'd have something to talk about. So, if nothing else, that happened. Yeah, if nothing else, uh, there's big news in gaming, and that's... Tony's again, fighting with people on Twitter. Once again, I am uh, making an ass of myself on Twitter. <laughs> so, For uh, all your followers' enjoyment. Yeah, just so you guys have something to listen to. Let me see what else I threw in my notes real quick. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess I can talk about a little bit of some experience with Mixer too, but we'll talk about oh, that. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'd love to hear about that. Uh, but we're at the top of the show. Leo. Yeah. What have you been playing this week? All right. Good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this week I've been playing some different stuff. You know what I did is I played a shitload of Spider-Man. You ever play Spider-Man? What's Spider-Man? Spider-Man it's called for the PlayStation 4. Oh, the new Spider-Man. Yeah. PS4 exclusive came out, I think two years ago, one year ago. Um, I'd played it a fair amount. I played it a little bit, rather, and I'd seen a lot of people play it when it first came out. I didn't play very much. I played it on stream once or twice, but that's yeah. pretty much it. And I remember thinking it's beautiful, and it's fun. The movement is fun, which is, you know, of course, the most important thing. But I was sort of turned off by the open worldliness of it. Not because yeah. it's open world, but it seemed very Ubisoft style. It's not Ubisoft. It's Insomniac. And I had really loved ins- uh, their other games, Infamous, right? That was them, I think. Those were awesome. That Did you play those? Infamous was. I played, uh, God, what Infamous game was it? Second Son, I think Yeah, I that was the, the PS4 launch one. I think it was a launch game. It was close to launch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the one I played. I yeah. played one of them. And I played, what's the one where you play as a sister? I think that's like the expansion. Yeah, it was uh, on PS Plus, I think. I think that's yeah, where yeah, I played yeah. that one. Yeah. So those were fun games. So, uh, you know, they're obviously qualified. This is kind of their wheelhouse. I'd like to say it's a fucking great game. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful, of course. Infamous, it looks. Right? Well, Infamous too, but I'm talking about Spider-Man. <laughs> it looks amazing, of course, which everyone kind of knows, but it really is pretty mind-boggling how good it looks. Like, the attention to detail is pretty crazy. Yeah, I found the combat a little repetitive early. It I is a little really, repetitive. It's you know. very cinematic, which is fun at first. Um, but there's a few things I don't like about it, but what I do like about it is the writing's very good mm-hmm. for, like, the conversations they have. His relationship with, with MJ is pretty interesting. You know, it's still Spider-Man, so it's not the most, you know, crazy or... They're not pushing any boundaries, really. But it's also kind of nice because Spider-Man's just so nice. He's yeah. so, like, pleasant. His whole, like, character is he's very sweet to everyone, which is kind of refreshing. And, you know, I tend to play a lot of games where that's not the case. Yeah, I like him and Aunt May in it. Their yeah, no, and she's really, great in this, yeah. too. They did a good job with her. So I think I'm not a big Spider-Man fan. I, you know, I like him well enough. But I think if you were, this would be so cool. I just didn't like anywhere where you had to do science. Yeah, it's this this the hacking stuff. There's a so that's the downside. I mean, the other cool thing is the the movement is just so fun. Like going from point A to point B is just does not get old. Yeah, ever. Like if you're just running around the city, it's so fun. I think most of the time I played that game, I chased helicopters around. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, just yeah, flying yeah. around. Like, can I can I catch a helicopter? You yeah, know? Like, and you probably can. You probably can. The downside is, yeah, the combat's nothing new in that it's you know it's very Arkham. Assassin's Creed, you know, it's not bad. There's a lot of variation in the movements. But what does annoy me a little bit is the open worldliness of it. it it's just one of those, it's a lot of boxes to check. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of unlock five towers to unlock four backpacks in each area, which again is a fun gameplay loop. There's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just, it feels a little bit outdated at this point in terms of, it just feels a little archaic and a little overdone. It seems weird that Spider Man can leave backpacks everywhere. Like, yeah, 55. And no one sees them. Like, Oh, he stashed this one behind a dumpster. Yeah. Or there was one where it was like just behind a pole and he was like, I remember putting this here in high school. I'm like, what? This is New yeah. York City. I don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone would be like, oh, there's a backpack. Yeah. Let's and it's like, oh, there's a top secret spider suit in it. Like, I don't <laughs> just leave it. It's not for us. 
Yeah. So anyway, it's a uh, it's fun though. And the reason I've been playing is I was kind of sick this week, so it was very mindless. And I don't mean that as an insult to mm-hmm. it. Like it's well written and it's beautiful. It's a good game. Mindless is one of my top criteria for games. Yeah, I love it's, it. It's mindless, unlike Fire Emblem. Yeah, which is very mindful, very cerebral. Um, yeah, so it's been really fun. Just play it a little bit, put it down when I want. Don't care. It's really cool. So if you're interested in just a sort of a light, fun action game and you haven't played it, which I'm sure most people have, it is excellent. Um, I also played some Fire Emblem. What do we call it? F E T H. F E three H. Oh yeah, that makes more sense. But if it was T H, we could call it Feth. Okay, Feth. Does that work? Yeah, sure. So I played some Feth, not very far because uh, I didn't get to play as much as I was hoping. I, I'm only to like the first. I think it's the first real battle where you're fighting the bandits. Right before you got here, actually, I was playing and someone died, and I was like, okay, guess I got a soft reset. I am so thirsty for that job system, like. I could not help myself but want to level these people into these advanced jobs. Yeah, that's interesting. I It's funny you say that. Right before I got here, I, I did, a like I guess, a test. What's it called? A qualification? Sur- qualification, yeah. As I did the first one, didn't know what I was doing, and it was fun. I like mm-hmm. gave Edelgard a test, and she passed with 100% because, duh. She's Edelgard, bro. Because she's a shit. Yeah. And, uh, and then I tried my character, and it was a 65%. And she passed though. Ooh, that so I was girl. like, nice. So anyway, I'm, I'm very little familiarity with it. I'd like to talk to you more about it though. Um, but yeah, it was fun. I probably only played a couple hours. Petra's my girl now, huh? Petra, Petra. Which is she the one with the stuff on her eye? Who yeah, can't the speak real English? tan on stuff on her eyes. Yeah, and the she's curly cool. hair. I love. I her. love that she t- acts like she can't speak English, but like her English, English is, is perfect, except for a few very bizarre phrases. <laughs> like she doesn't have an accent. It's yeah. not like I, I think that's funny. But yeah, she's cool. Yeah, I my like roommate's her. like that. He's from Taiwan, but his English is like really good. Yeah. But he misses up a word and he's like, sorry, my English is bad. And I'm like, bro, you're, like, you're bilingual and you're communicating <laughs> all of your ideas just because yeah. you can't say lasagna, which is an Italian <laughs> which word. Which is not even an yeah, English word. Yeah, doesn't mean you're bad at English. I like, know. I always think about that. Know? Like when even people who speak English poorly, I'm like, well, you speak English a lot better than I speak your language. Yeah, for sure. You're doing a good job. Take it easy. But yeah, it is fun, man. Just running around that. I'm exploring the... The area is fun and just all the side quests. It's very cool. I watched a short video that went over like what characters you need to recruit because they have cool special skills. Ooh, that, that'd be good to know. And uh, yeah, it's interesting, right? Because I guess there's this, so there's this hidden stat. I guess it's not really hidden, but um, whenever a character levels up, they have a random chance to level up certain um, attributes. Yeah, which is an interesting system. So it's sort of random. Sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you'll get four. Like you don't know. It's, and it's because they have each stat has a role hmm. every time you level. So like some will be like 60% chance to improve speed or in like a 30% chance to inclu- improve uh, mind or faith or whatever. Right. Yeah. So uh, there's characters that, um, that have like Petra's got really strong speed. Right. And um, speed is what makes you do like double attacks. Ooh. Yeah. I have no right? idea how that works. Yeah. So speed makes you double attacks and her dex is high. So like double attacks and crits. She can oh, get so really she's high. Just fucking shit up. So she can just wreck. Right, cool. like, yeah. So you just like, you look at that, and you're like, oh, like these are the characters that can like really blow up if I get them built out right. And I'm just like so eager to like, I don't know, I don't know if you've had guest characters come in yet, like Catherine or no, anybody. not at all. Like I said, I'm only a few hours in. So you see these guest characters come in, and they're already like teched out. You know, like she's a sword master, which is like a, a last oh, tier. That's cool. Um, which is like a last tier trait. And, like, she's untouchable. You know what I mean? Like, she comes onto the battlefield, and she just dodges everything. It takes, like, everywhere. four attacks, and is just, like, ripping out crits. And you're like, oh, I can, like, build people like this. Like, this is, is so exciting. So you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's so exciting. But, yeah. So, it's pretty cool. Fun. Well, no, I mean, I'd, we should talk more about it, because that's pretty much all I played. I didn't get to play much this week. But um, a lot of Spider-Man. Not, lots of Spidey-Man. Pew, pew. So what, what did you play, though? I'd be curious to know. What it sounds I? like you may have played a little bit of Fire Emblem, but did you play anything else before we get into that? Uh, what else did I play? I played uh, some Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah, so did I, a little bit. But. So I finally got to Dravania, the land of the dragons. Is it cool? It's Don't, pretty no cool. No spoilers, but is it dope? It's pretty cool. Have you found that the story is a little more interesting, or have you seen any of that yet? Or It's way more interesting. Really? Like it's almost, way better. Like, almost immediately? I will say, like, and I don't... I don't want to spoil things, right? Yeah. Um, but playing through a Realm Reborn, as much as it sucks, is important. Yeah. You know, like as much as everyone's like, oh, get a level skip and all this stuff. Like if I didn't see the ending of a Realm Reborn going into Heavensward, like it wouldn't have the impact it has. Yeah. 
Cause now I'm like, uh, I'm on a mission. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like wrongs need to be righted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I need to find justice. I need to, uh, there's tasks that I must now accomplish. Man, I'm so, you know? I'm so interested to see. I'm getting close, like, but I'm not there yet. Like it's a real, like, like, oh, there's things I got to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, this is important now. Yeah. And I feel like Heaven's Sword does a good job. I Like I can see why people get more and more into it. Right. Cause you get so invested. Like, like the scions are so important to you hmm. by the end of a realm reborn. Um, because even though you've done all these mundane tasks with them, you've done so much of it yeah. that it's like, that's like, they're my people. You know, like even I remember when I was playing realm reborn and you like, when you select your free company, yeah, I was like, why can't the scions be my free company? You know what I mean? Like they're my people. Like yeah. I don't need to choose one of these city States. Like, like I'm a scion, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's so true. And so as it like plays out and as you kind of, you know, things happen and, and that like dynamic shifts and changes and evolves, which it has, it does through Rome Reborn too. People come and go, yeah, no, uh, sure. and you, you know, locations change. And, uh, as that kind of evolves, uh, you know, you start to realize in heaven sword that it's like, like, Oh, I need to take care of these things that have been like come that have come across from Rome Reborn. You know, there's, there's, there's loose ends that need to be tied up. Yeah. Right. And so as you're embarking on this new adventure and you're in these new cities and trying to like ingratiate these new people and, and, uh, and prove your prowess to these, like these, these new people and new governments. Right. Uh, you start to get these things where it's like, no, like we got to go back. Like, like there's, there's, th- th- it's a, something's happened and we need to go, handle the situation from a realm reborn yeah and 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 make sure that this gets tied up or that we find justice for this person and now's our opportunity we must leave this place that's cool and strike out you know and uh and it's cool like it feels good to be like like we're stronger now you know what i mean we're more motivated now than ever yeah and uh and we're going to deal with this you know and uh it's super cool it's fun it, it definitely draws you in um I skipped a lot of the story in Realm Reborn. Yeah, I, I recently stopped skipping as much. Occasionally I will, but I, I skipped probably the first like half. And it I don't gets, really think it matters that no, much because I know all the, the characters end. are. It gets better at the end. Yeah, for sure. I think once they started bringing in Sid, it was like, it's still weird, but I started to be like, okay, I'm at least interested enough to read it. And yeah. sometimes if I'm bored, I'll just still skip. And it's not really because the writing's bad. It's just because there's so much of it. Yeah, and it's funny, like, because it's all like written and you don't hear the names a lot. Like, I can't remember people's names yeah, that same. much. Yeah, um, but you know, like the little elfy boy, uh, Alfu and yeah, yeah, Alwin. and his sister or whatever. Yeah, like, like you spend so much time with him too, and like his story is very interesting. And like once that kind of starts to evolve, you really yeah. start to be like, okay, like I, I can get with this, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, it gets a lot better. And I'm only in Heaven Sword, right? And I hear it just gets better and better after this. It does. Um, it makes me wonder what the original game was like. Like when it first launched, I've heard it's awful, but I'm, I'm curious, like what even the setup was or how, like what was so awful about it? I wonder. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I, I mean, I never touched, obviously very few people ever touched that game. Yeah. It'd so. almost be interesting. I bet you could probably find a YouTube video. It's like side by side, but I would just be curious cause I'm really enjoying it and it's so polished and people love it so much. It would be kind of interesting to see like when it was universally panned and how something could go from really bad to really good because yeah. in, in, in a long amount of time, but it would be kind of interesting to see the genesis of that. And I definitely thought I would roll out of being a black mage once I got through the first, uh, through Realm Reborn and I am more devoted to the dark arts than ever, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I just can't, I can't stop. I can't, can't stop, stop that DPS. I can't stop shooting fire one. I just can't stop. <laughs> you don't got to stop. No. One thing that's interesting about being a tank, and I don't know if this is true in other MMOs or whatever, other games, um, is it's weird because you don't really tank during the game. You only tank in dungeons. Yeah. And it's so important. So it's weird because, like, when you're in a dungeon, you have to be spamming Iron Will and, like, constantly pulling whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. Um, But when you're playing, you don't do any of that. You're basically just a warrior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of funny. I like 95% of the game because I play solo almost all the time. That's just how I like to do it is like just a totally different game. And then when I'm in a dungeon, I'm like, oh shit, I got it. I like now I have to do a whole different set of skills. It's kind of interesting. That's true. Whereas if you're DPS, it's, I assume it's a little more, you're just trying to do damage per second. Yeah, it's true of most MMOs. Yeah. I mean, I know like, wow, got a little better with making tank abilities do some kind of like uh, reflected damage kind of became a big part of it where you'd have these, 
you'd have these big what they'd call like rage dumps. Warriors would generate rage, uh, which was like their mana almost, but it would you'd build it from fighting, you know, and so they'd create these kind of damaging rage dumps you could use. Hmm. Uh, so if you were tanking, you rage dumps would usually be like a tanking skill. But, you know, if you were grinding and doing leveling, uh, you'd have like one specific rage dump that you could use to clear mobs. You know? Interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty it's much so, the way of it's it. It's so different. Healer's the same way. Oh yeah, for sure. Right, because you sense. can't heal in quests, right? Yeah, it's just weird. It's like two different games in one almost. I mean, even DPS is even DPS is kind of that way. And I think that's why MMOs, like everyone says, like, you know, like the end game is the game because yeah. it's played so differently in that in that leveling capacity than it is in like dungeons and raids and stuff. Because, yeah. you know, you're using whole different skill sets. Your rotations are totally different. Like, uh, you know, like I sleep everything when I'm playing solo. You know what I mean? So I'm a black mage. As soon as a, it, like, you know, most of the encounters in Final Fantasy 14, you like walk up to a circle and it's like a dangerous presence mm -hmm. and four four enemies pop up and they wait yeah. three seconds for you to do whatever you're going to do yeah, first. Yeah, and they're super weak usually. Yeah, and so usually I just, they pop up, I cast sleep, it's an AOE sleep, and I try and hit as many of them as I can, and whoever's not asleep, that's the guy I kill first, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. I take a lot of damage, I'm a mage, right? Right. Um, so, you know, and I don't do that, you can't do that in dungeons. So yeah, of course tank's not. off pulling the entire map, what are you going to do? You know, so... Um, yeah, I usually just throw my shield at whoever it is, get them to come over to me, and then just kick their ass with four, five, and six over and over. Yeah. Occasionally, uh, yeah, what, anyway. Wait until you start doing, like, the ten mans and the, like, because you'll have to do those at the end of the Realm Reborn quest. Oh, interesting. And you'll get tanks in there that will literally pull the beginning of the instance all the way to the end of it. Every mob in that instance. And then you'll just AOE nuke that whole... Thing, like yeah. the entire the entire that sounds fun yeah the entire dungeon yeah i'm kind of nervous about that but then again maybe it's better because then there's other tanks so i don't get as much yeah you shit. wouldn't be the main tank i would suggest if you go into those like don't pretend you're going to be the main tank no. and just spend your time watching your healers and if anybody jumps off onto them pull them back into the main tank that makes sense like you know like i would i would say it's like a support tank a support tank they call it like an off tank Okay, or like that's it, good is there something that needs to be tanked away from the fight? Yeah, because I'm good at that. I like yeah. that shield blob shit. Anyway, yeah, it's fun though. I, I, it's the, the those are like pretty traditional MMO mechanics, and it's fun to uh, explore those, especially as WoW's kind of lost touch of those. So and it much. is fun, especially because that is again is my first one. Yeah, it's it's a good time, and it's a uh, it's it's fun to kind of learn about all that. And, <laughs> and it is it is quite a language barrier too. I mean. Again, when you just watch the chat, I'm starting to pick it up. But at first, I was like, I don't understand a single goddamn thing anyone is saying. If they do O slash, they're just waving to you. No, I, I know. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I got a list of all the emotes, too, just because I was curious. So there's a shitload. That's a lot. Some of them are really weird. Yeah, they're really weird. <laughs> um, I would suggest, um, oh, what do they call them? In the cities, have you like made a maid? Like a, I can't remember what they call the person yet. You can make two characters that just carry stuff for you oh no i haven't done that so like uh like i dump all my crafting materials on them so i don't have to carry them around because my bags are actually getting full yeah my shit is so full I yeah i haven't even like ever done any inventory management i probably should i can't remember what they call them but you can do that and kind of dump all your stuff and yeah. not worry about it it's a pretty amazingly large game yeah it's a lot to it which is cool yeah and then um i've been playing a lot of fire emblem yeah which is another incredibly massive game it's different but much more number heavy. Very big. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we kind of talked about it a bit before, but, uh, you know, I haven't having a good time with it. I'm probably 15 hours in now. Okay. I feel like yeah. I haven't even started. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> There's still so, like, I feel like I'm still in the beginning. I know there's a time skip somewhere, and I have not hit that yet. Huh. Um, but I explore a lot. I spend a lot of time in the monastery running around. Yeah, so do I. I think more, that's probably my favorite part. More than I probably should, and then, like, to advance the game. Hey, man. You having fun? I'm having fun. And I that's think that's how you should be doing it. I think the teaching sections are really fun. Yeah, they are fun. I like that a lot. Uh, I like sharing a meal with the homies. Mm -hmm. um, I like seeing all the VO they recorded for like every character's interaction. It's, it's really incredible. amazing that there's VO for every character and their interaction. I know. I can't even fathom the logistics of that. It's incredible. I just changed it to Japanese, actually. Oh, interesting. Do you like it? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I, I honestly, it just feels more natural for them. It's such a weeb thing to say. No, that makes but sense. Though. It just it feels. I mean, 
I know you didn't believe me when I first said it, but then you started doing it, and it's like I believed you. I'm just saying. I just never heard of such a thing. Was, you were you seemed skeptical when I told you I did it for Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And but once you turn it on, you're like, oh yeah, this kind of makes a lot more sense. Well, I was thinking about that the other day about how like Breath of the Wild, like why? And then I realized because Zelda games don't have yo. This yeah. is the first one, so mm-hmm. that's why I never did it before because it was always just people screaming, and that's beyond language. Yeah, or like Persona, right? Persona. I, I think I left in English. I, in Japanese, it's so cool. I mean, it's cool in English, too. It or is. Maybe I didn't. Now I'm getting confused. I, you have to download the Japanese for it. I did download it, but I don't think I used it. Uh, so I turned it to Japanese. I think Persona 4 I did in Japanese. I did both in 4 and 5. Anyway. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I think I th- there's definitely something to be said about experiencing it in the original language, right? Like, just because that's how it was created. Mm-hmm. Not to disparage the voice acting or anything in English. It's all good, but... Yeah, I will say the voice acting for this is very good in English. Yeah, no, I was definitely taken. It's th- really good, especially for the sheer volume of how much there is. I think they did a good job. It's just something about knowing it's a Japanese story and having it. In yeah, the, I don't know why. I yeah, don't know. I think that makes perfect sense. I just feel like you can always sort of feel it. And that, I mean, that to me seems like the most weeb thing to say. <laughs> but like you know, Uncharted in English is fine. You know what I mean? Spider Man in English seems yeah. Perfect. You wouldn't want to play Uncharted no. in like Russian, to but be something wild. yeah, even like Metro in Russian, way cooler Apparently than Metro in English, is, right? Yeah. Um, just something about like the feeling of a game that's played in its native tongue like feels better. It feels more organic to the experience, and maybe that's in my head. Maybe I just like no. I think that makes pr- it's like reading a book if you can read both languages. Yeah, like why wouldn't you? Yeah, no, nope, you know totally. what I mean. Um, that that said, sometimes Japanese voice acting can be very irritating. It can be, and American can too. So having that luxury to be able to choose is kind of nice. Yeah, no, it can be for sure. Um, that's pretty much what I play. Did you watch any Evo? No. So I only watched Smash. Yeah. And one thing I'll tell you is our boy Joker cleaned it up. Did he? Yeah. Oh, that makes me happy. Yeah, Joker was the grand the the grand champion no of the It was oh, a Joker. Of, main. of course he was. Yeah. People are now mad that Joker is overpowered. Oh well. But uh, have they played Persona? Because he better be overpowered. It was an exciting final. I was will it? say That's this. Cool. I only watched the semis and the finals for losers and winners. And uh the guy that won was a guy from Mexico, and oh, he played cool. Joker the whole way through. He was in losers. He'd w- lost one game early and literally, like, just crushed from that point on. Just, like, was destroying with Joker. Oh, that's cool. He was so good. It was amazing to watch. And then in the grand finals, he was playing against this guy, Tweak, uh, TSM Tweak. I, don't, I can't remember the, the guy that played Joker's name, but uh, the guy that actually won. But the TSM guy played uh, Pokemon Trainer. It was really good. Huh. It was really good. And was actually up two to zero. So it's a best of five. Oh, wow. Up two stocks. Wow. On him, right? And just, this Joker just rallied. He's like, all right, I'm done. Enough messing around. Rallied. Won the game where he was down two stocks. Won the next two games in a row. Won that match. Then, you know, because he was at losers, had to win twice. Oh, okay. Came back and then 3 0 the dude. Wow. And it was just like... (laughs) <laughs> it was crazy it was crazy to oh, watch. it was awesome it was pretty awesome uh, it was fun I, I love watching smash even though i'm bad at it and there was just some real exciting smash play there was a lot it's just whenever i watch smash compared to playing it it's amazing to watch what people do off the ring right like like the ledge guarding and, yeah that's like where the real game is yeah, right? the dunking i mean there's a lot of game on the ring too but some of these like ledge guards and dunks were just incredible. That's right. Cool. And some this one guy was doing. Um, oh, what's her name? The Fire Emblem girl with the sword. I know you don't know because you don't play that game that much. But uh, just like fought this fox, or if it was wolf. It wasn't fox. And just from zero zero, just ran him off the side of the ring and just dunked him. And it was just like crazy. <laughs> it was crazy to watch. It was intense. It was so fun. That's awesome. You know, it's funny. I, I really like fighting games, and they, obviously they lend themselves so well to esports, or as I call it, esports. Esports. But I've never actually watched any competitive um, fighting games, or like a high-level fighting games, which it sounds like the way you described it would be super fun. You've never watched EVO before? No, never. Oh, it's so fun to yeah, watch. Yeah, of course it is. Like, why wouldn't it be? It's, it's such a, like, a pure form of esports, right? It's like so straightforward. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. I'll have to check that out. That sounds really fun. Hold on, I'm gonna look up the guy's name that won real quick because he deserves it for winning. Um, I shouldn't be that guy that's just like, oh, MK Leo was his name. Leo, Leo, yeah. And you forgot his name. I know I'm a Leo. Your name's Leo. I mean, fuck, man, come on. 
Uh, MK Leo's Joker, and he that is cool. Crushed it. MK Leo, good job. TSM tweak, you really choked, but good job to you too. You got second place. <laughs> good job for getting that far. Yeah, yeah, you did really good. You're way better than me. Um, so I watched that. Um, also, I streamed on Mixer. Oh, did you? Following your boy Tyler. Following my boy Tyler Blevin. Uh, I actually streamed me editing the movies podcast, their movie show. Oh, nice. The uh, Max Payne one. Oh, yeah. I didn't get a lot of viewers, but I had a few people, and they were very nice. Were they? I oh, was surprised. Cool. Maybe because it was premiere. A couple of people jumped in and was like, oh, I like to edit video, and we talked about it while I was doing it, and it was very pleasant, oh, I got to say. Cool. Uh, maybe it's just because I was streaming something creative like that. I mean, I feel like that happens when I do Gundams, too, while on yeah. Twitch, but it was very nice, I got to say. It was a good experience. Did you find the interface fine and everything? Yeah, I didn't have any issues with it. I think... Um, because I've been watching some Mixer, because Newegg is doing the Mixer versus Newegg thing right now. Oh, cool. They're playing games against each other. Um, I think some of the built-in fan interaction is pretty fun. Yeah. Because right? you like generate sparks as you watch, huh. which are like free currency. And you can use those currency to like natively post like GIFs in the chat or Interesting. Uh, like big emotes and stuff, which is pretty fun. It seems like a neat idea to get people to like stay in the chats, right? Yeah. Um, that's cool. So that's pretty cool. But I was reading about how some of the other people that are now kind of getting bigger now that Ninja's gone. I hadn't heard of a single one of them. Well, a Shroud, I guess. But they were just talking about how his numbers were so huge. Yeah. It's his, like 15 million. Yeah. And the highest now is like seven or eight. Mm-hmm. So it's not even close. He's like double anyone. Yeah. So just, that's like fucking crazy. Like I knew he was big, but I didn't realize he was just so like, it's a big deal moving over like that. Yeah. He made a crazy run at it. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. was pretty intense it was also cool hearing about how some of the people even some of these guys are, are yeah it's almost all guys but like five million people and this dude doesn't even really care he's like he's like i'm not trying to be a streamer for a living obviously he is but yeah he's not he kind of went the opposite road of ninja where he's like no nah, i'm just gonna play whatever the hell i want whether it's like a sh- indie game or a horror game he's not trying to like have an image really he's more just like nah, I just play games and how I'm sure his viewership would be so much higher if he kind of tried to navigate it. But it's obviously working for him. Anyway, it was just interesting to kind of read about the business side of it and and how there's kind of this hole that's being filled by people. Yeah. And it's kind of a race. And yeah, and who knows what makes the magic, right? Like, I don't think there's a formula, right? Totally. Yeah, and, so and I think they were saying how a lot of these people, it, it is directly you know, attributed to the rise of Fortnite, like they were in the right place at the right time. They yeah. just happened to be playing the right game. And, and that got them to a million. And once you're at a million, it's easier to go higher. But it was like a, a lot of it is luck. I mean, that's why a all lot the, of it's not. All but. the previous big streamers were League of Legends streamers. Yeah. Right. Because it was so big for a while. Um, a lot of the big streamers were like former League pros that kind of came out of it. And yeah. were just kind of ready to stream as, uh, as that game kind of took off. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the same thing with Fortnite and whatever's going to be next, you know, kind of the same thing. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it's it's exciting. And, you know, I hope Mixer finds a way to get a footing in this, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, Me they're, too. They're going to need to really invest in getting some more people over to do so. But uh, it seems like if they're willing to. So let's we'll see what happens. It is funny. It's like, man, it'd be nice to have some competition. It's like, oh, great. It's Microsoft and Amazon. Like. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Well, I guess that's great, but it's like still two of the biggest companies in the world. Yeah, but I checked my uh, Twitch account today, and I need twenty more bucks to get a, my next payout. So I'm not going to switch to Mixer yet until I get twenty more bucks. Nice. <laughs> and then you're gonna, and then I'm never going to see you again because you're going to be a millionaire. I'm gonna be a Mixer millionaire. What can I say? <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, yeah. So that's that's pretty much it. Um, did you want to talk about your speed running? Uh, well, don't say it like that. Jeez. Your little speed running uh, thing you were talking well, no, about? No, it was an article I actually just read. Just that, little, that little, <laughs> you know, up. little side thing you speed like. Speed running is cool. It is cool. It's super oh, it's cool. That's very cool. I love it. Yeah. Um, it was actually an article I just saw on Kotaku by Heather Alexandra, who does some pretty good speed running s- reporting. Um, and it was a thing I'd never heard of. And I, I, I f- almost all the speed runs I watch are Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Dino Crisis. Like, you know, that generation survival horror. And yeah. for some reason, I just love watching those. I love those games, but watching them getting broken is really interesting to me. And uh, it was a Silent Hill 2 thing. And this mysterious person, I think it was called like Silent SH2 Answer or something. Mm-hmm. What he was doing, or what they were doing, is they were dropping in and giving the answers to the puzzles that the speedrunners were doing before they got there. And I don't know if you've played a lot of Silent Hill. I suspect you have not. No. 
it's very random the way that, that the puzzles work. Like there is a system and there is a math to it, but it's it's a lot of RNG in terms of what puzzle you get. So it's not like you see one puzzle and you know what the rest are going to be. So no one could figure out how the hell he was doing this. Is he a ghost? Well, that's what was so funny. It's Silent Hill, right? And so you just drop in, say the solutions, and then the, the and the conversation was like, well, now I'm cheating because I have the answer, even though I didn't want it or ask for it. It's not like I can pretend I didn't, which kind of kills a run because it's not fair. But the really interesting thing was no one knew who this person was or why they were doing it or how they were doing it, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. And they were doing it to a bunch of different runners. It was only Silent Hill 2, though, I believe. Um, so everyone was kind of freaking out and like on Reddit and trying to be like, Hey, what do we do? Right? Like, how do we address this? Cause they're basically just favoriting whatever streamer they're watching yeah. is now going to have a better run. So how do we equalize it? Um, anyway, it turns out it was just someone who, I guess they, f- they figured out some formula or found some formula to kind of crack it open and they finally posted on Pastebin. But, uh, that's kind of a cool way to do it. It's very mysterious for a few days. You should have never said anything. Yeah, right? Just, you should just disappear. Ghost. Yeah, or never even just, just done it for like a week and then never done it again. Mm-mm. But it is an interesting thing because now that that document's out there, they have to figure out, okay, so how do we proceed from here? Like now do we just make this so anyone can use it? It's kind of like using steroids in normal sports, right? Yeah, but I think speedrunning's all about steroids. In that, no, it is. That's kind of the yeah, point. you know. But then, yeah, it's all about like, okay, so what's the new floor? What's the new base? And that starts a whole conversation about like when they do discover exploits or mods that take RNG out of a speed run, do you use those? I mean, it's cheating, but I don't know. It's all about equalizing the playing field. It was yeah. an interesting it was an interesting kind of insight into the, A, it was cool, but also an insight in, sort of into that whole hobby and that fan base. So, yeah, what speed running is. Yeah, so if, you, if you're interested in it at all, that is a cool article. It's real quick, quick read, but I thought that was very interesting. And it is, there's something cool to me about how Silent Hill 2 is so spooky and scary and that there's sort of this mysterious person just who could see into the future. It's kind of mm-hmm. cool. No, well, that is cool. Um, yeah, I would have been creepy about it. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Like have. once a year, come back and do it again. Like and then do it like matters a, the most. And then do like a creepy pasta about you know, yeah. you know how you died in Silent Hill <laughs> and like <laughs> totally. They're like you died I, playing I, Silent Hill, and then you got into the game. That did cross my mind a little bit. Like, man, it's because it's Silent Hill. You could add a little fun with the narrative there. You got in a little meta with it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the narrative of Silent Hill, but you totally obviously it's a horror. You could have played into it like yeah. Or like, you know, my little brother died when I was playing Silent Hill, you yeah, know. And, and now the main character kind of looks like him more yeah. every time. I hear him whisper in my ears, like, what's it's, coming next? it's always the answers. Yeah. Every, always. He's constantly whispering in my ear, what's next? never stops. The only time he's quiet is when I play Silent Hill. Yeah. It would be dope. It would be <laughs> so dope. I don't well, even like scary stuff, yeah. but that'd be dope. Dude, so you've never played Silent Hill? I played the first one. That's a scary game. The first one's great. It is scary. I was thinking about the first one and how um, ahead of assignment was in terms of the camera angles because all the other games were doing pre-rendered backgrounds and shitty tank controls. And the fact it was 3D, you know, it doesn't look great by today's standards, but it allowed them so much more freedom with the camera movement and they really take advantage of some very weird and advanced way ahead of assignment out of nowhere camera movement that's very cool. I was okay until the knife babies. Yo, papa. And then yeah. I was like, nah, I'm not going to play this game anymore. They're scary, man. That game is fucking creepy. That game is creepy. I did not was not a fan. Really? No. It was just because it's scary or because you thought it was bad? Because uh, it was scary. and I mean, honestly, like, I don't necessarily think horror games are generally that good. I think some of... I, yeah. I think System Shock's pretty good for its time. System, System Shock 2. System Shock 2 is very cool. You know, like, I think those are cool games that are scary. Well, like, what about Bioshock? I haven't played Bioshock. I hear it's very good though. Like, yeah, like that's it's not even really a horror game. But that's what I mean. I think that there are good games that are scary. Yeah, I think games that kind of um, trade in jump scares and yeah. uh, and creepiness. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like as their selling point, are generally not very good. Hmm. You know, uh, as a rule, uh, maybe they are. Uh, well, I guess good, just depending on however you define good. Like fun to play, maybe not. Yeah, fun to play. Or yeah. even not even no, no, fun I mean, to play, like, um, like, uh, I think that there is a a fundamental like level of goodness. I don't think it's all subjective, right? I think. Uh, well, I guess I just mean like, for example, Silent Hill is a good example of it's not fun to play, and in fact, you could argue the controls are very bad mm-hmm. and it's obtuse and the UI sucks, um, but it's still a great game because of the atmosphere it fosters and the way it makes you feel and the story and the way it tells it you know what i mean like i probably would have stuck with it if it played 
great. If yeah. I played this no, game no. and was like, wow, this feels, this is so fast and fun and neat yeah. and interesting to play. I can, I'll play it even though it's scary. Yeah. The majority of the time I try to play a scary game, I'm anxious and also it's um, <laughs> stumbling over the controls. Yeah. No, and, that's fair. Um, and not entertained by the, like not entertained yeah. while I'm, while I'm anxious, you know what I no, mean? No, no, totally. That's, which is why, that, that's totally fair. Which is why I think Resident Evil 2 is so great. That's what I was about to say. That is a game that I do think yeah. treads that line really nicely where it's very smooth and it's beautiful and it's fun to play. And the original didn't hit me as well as the remake did. Yeah. You know, I thought the original Resident Evil was revolutionary for its time. Resident Evil 2, I don't remember. It's funny, like when I played the remake, I feel like I remembered big parts of it, but also don't remember playing it really yeah you know what i mean so i was like did i fin- play this game i think so i don't know like three i clearly remember playing um but you know the remake i'm like wow this is amazing like i'm not even i don't even care if it's scary like you know what i mean yeah. like this is a game i want to play that is such a fun game um i was thinking about tank controls and how weird those were so bad for that yeah for anyone who's younger or whatever doesn't remember this is like you press up and instead of moving up you'd move the character forward yeah so depending on what uh, direction you're facing up would mean forward now does that sound stupid yeah. yeah it was very stupid you get used to it so you're like yeah i'm good at this you get used to it but the more i think about it i'm like why was that i guess because it was pre-rendered but even then like i don't see how that's r- it's not like final fantasy had tank control so i don't know why they thought that was a good idea to make it harder to play that seems like a shitty way to add to the horror like, this is really good, but the controls make it really fun. So let's make it shittier so that it's scarier. Yeah, I just think that there was, like you said, like, hence the name tank controls, right? I think yeah. there was this kind of, it's like inverted look. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like. Oh, boy. It's like, no, we're like. We're about to get some emails. I'm just saying, you know, this is this is how looking is, right? Like, this is yeah. how movement is. Fo- up is forward, forward is ahead of you. You know what I yeah, mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. I think there's this mentality that's hard to break, especially when you've been doing it in other games, right? But like, that's the problem is that it wasn't like that's how all games were. It joystick, was only some, joystick-based games were. No, not all of them. Just but, like weird subsets, and there were plenty of joystick games that were not like that. Like I don't Mario know. Mario 64. But that no, I'm saying like joysticks. Oh, I see. What like you're saying. sticks. Like if you oh, were holding yeah, yeah. on a joystick, like pushing it was forward. Oh no, that's a good point. Right, yeah. and I, I think that's where, like, like inverted uh, look. Uh, I think that's where that's born from, right? Oh, like, interesting. Like that joystick mentality of like, no, these are little joysticks. You know yeah, what I mean? Like no, they're not really thumb good, controls. They're really, joysticks. That's a really good point. You know? Um, and, you know, I think it just takes a while to break from that and realize like this new control scheme offers something different. Yeah. Like you, know? you can press forward and go forward. Like 3D movement. So now we'll talk about the thing I don't want to talk about. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> So uh, there's an indie game uh, that I announced earlier this week that I was releasing on the Epic Game Store exclusively. It's mm. a game called Ooblets. Ooblets. And a fun name. You know what? I'm going to read the press release to you. I think this is important. Okay. Because I've uh, been arguing with uh, indie game devs for, uh, for a while about this. Uh, not that I think... So the devs were harassed for their announcement, right? And in, in ways that were very terrible, right? Like anti-semitic things death threats starts about their wife things that are totally unacceptable and yeah. and i think that's um i think we can all agree that that is um undeserved disproportionate um we don't need this kind of vitriol right yeah it's just not making the world a better place no um but i will say this and this is kind of one of my points of contention is this vitriol has always existed you know uh i got an argument with the game dev that told me that this started two years ago and I was never a problem before Gamergate, you know, and my response was they got, this is how they got Jesus, even with the anti-Semitism, right? <laughs> like, yeah. like, um, it's why people fight at sports events. It's, um, it's basic tribalism. It's existed yeah. forever. Um, that's not an excuse for it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but this is real human nature. Yeah, just yeah. filtered through a very strange prism. Yeah, filtered through a really weird, very strange prism. Like far removed, but yeah. Very and then I think the anonymity thing does not help either. It doesn't help at all. You know what I mean? It doesn't help at all. And and it it it, it provides this kind of um this this mob style uh lack of reason to yeah. individuals. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally. Like where it's like, no, we're a mob. It's like, no, you're an individual sitting in your house. 
you know, but because there's like other cyber mob with you, you know, you feel like it's, or you're vindicated or there's no, there's no uh, repercussions to your actions. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm going to read this announcement that they made. So this was their announcement. They so made this was the Ooblets announcement that they were going to the Epic store. Uh, this is the Ooblets announcement. They made they're going to the Epic store. It's close okay. to July 31st to where to their website to their, uh, yeah. Ooblets.com. Okay. So I think this was, I think this was technically intended for their Patreons, which makes more sense, but, uh, we'll get into kind of what that means after this as well. Uh, and me just reading this, I think people will, could not, will feel as victim blaming. Um, but fuck you if you think that. Uh, <laughs> Ooblets. Uh, we did a thing. Posted July 31st, 2019. Everyone kept talking about this epic thing. So we thought we'd see what it's all about. Here's what these epic folks are doing. First, they teach every kid in the world these obnoxious dances, and now they're offering funding to game developers in exchange for PC exclusivity on their game store. This is exactly what Marx warned us about. Just imagine if other companies got it in their head to offer funding in exchange for exclusive. What'd be next? Game consoles paying for games to be exclusive on their consoles? Netflix Netflix paying for exclusive shows? Newspapers paying for exclusive articles? It'd be some sort of late capitalist dystopia. Okay, so goofing aside, yes, we've signed with Epic for PC launch exclusivity. It's incredible news for us, and I'm hoping you'll all be excited about it too. We asked Epic if we could frankly talk frankly about the situation, and they were like, whatever. So here's a bit of insight into what this means and why we did it. Who is Epic and are Who is Epic and what are you talking about? Is the next heading. Epic is a company that makes the Unreal Game Engine, a bunch of popular games, including Fortnite and the Epic Game Store. Uh, Epic Game Store is a PC game distribution platform like Steam, Origin, Itch.io, and GOG Galaxy. Epic paying for PC exclusives has become the latest thing gamers have gotten angry about, which I'll talk more about further down. What it means for Ooblets. Ooblets will be launching on PC through EGS. We won't be selling the game on other PC stores for a pretty long while. That's the exclusivity bit. We'll still be launching on Xbox One. The PC exclusivity is just limited to PC. We got some cash money up front from the deal so we can make the game we always wanted to with fewer compromises. What it means for you. You'll have to install EGS if you want to buy Ooblets on PC. I know that's asking a lot, but I believe in you and your ability to download a free thing and create a user account. If you haven't already done so to play Fortnite, which I know you have. Why did we do this? So we had a big decision to make and we didn't take it lightly because Epic doesn't yet have the same market share as their competitors. They offered us a minimum on guaranteed sales that would match what we'd been wanting to earn if we were just selling Ooblets across all the stores. This takes a huge burden of uncertainty off of us because now we know that no matter what, the game won't fail and we won't be forced to move back in with our parents. Now we can just focus on making the game without worrying about keeping the lights on. The upfront money they're providing means we'll be able to afford more help and resources to start ramping up on productions and doing some other cooler things. Uh, So when is Ooblets coming out? Uh, We feel the same impatience about launching Ooblets as you uh, are probably feeling. I think it's like the game is taking forever because we announced the game and I've been sharing everything about it since basically the day we came up with the concept. Most students only start talking about their games when they are close to the finish line. We've only ever had the resources for just one pro- programmer, Rebecca, who makes everything. She also does most of the art, UI, and other stuff for the game. The investments we're getting up front from Epic will allow us to ramp up our development resources, which will lead to faster development in the long run, but it might also delay our initial launch a tad because it takes some time to ramp things up and because we won't have as much financial pressure to prematurely shove something out we're not happy with out the door. We're not going to be perfectionist about our initial launch, and there's still a lot of foundational stuff. We need to sort out before we launch early access. Uh, Angry at Epic, us, the world. This is the last heading. Oh, this is all really long. Um, I don't know if I want to read the whole thing. This is pretty long. But I think you get the gist. I think there's a lot of good stuff in there, right? That's why I kind of was trying to read the whole thing. Because I don't think it's, like, bad, right? I think there's bits in there that really tell the story that I think uh, is important, right? Uh, they need the uh, injection of capital so they can make the game they want to make. Um, their Patreon version of making this game was not allowing them to achieve their vision, and that that means they have to sign on with someone to make it exclusive. 
Um, yeah, I think the bit about the guaranteed sales and like, you know, why the business model works for what they're trying to do. I mean, that seemed fair. That does seem very fair. Um, but the moment I, so let me tell you this. I saw this story uh, pop up on Twitter about these people being harassed, right? And I was like, oh, that sucks. Another Epic Game Store drama story, right? And then I saw screenshots of the actual harassment. And I was like, what did they do? <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> like, um, I was like, this is way, way worse than kind of what we've seen in this space, right? Yeah. And I searched the article, and of course, the announcement wasn't anywhere in that article. I searched a couple other uh, articles. They also didn't include any of the announcement or a link to the announcement. And immediately, I was like, something is in that announcement. Yeah. Right? I click on the announcement, and even that first paragraph uh, where they're talking about... Uh, you know, uh, late stage capitalism and Marxism. And um, immediately I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Like what 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 has transpired here? Yeah. Right. Uh, they thought this was a good idea. I don't think any PR or marketing agency in the world would have ever let this get published. I don't know, man. You see some stupid shit out there. Well, I mean, maybe I, if they <laughs> if they were, it was because they they were searching for sensational headlines. I mean, right. I could, judging by what you read, I could see it from the perspective of, and from what I understand, I, I this is interesting to hear because I only heard the context of the guy sort of following this up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the guy who wrote it, but he's the guy. He's he said that throughout the entire marketing of this game, this is kind of the the tone we've taken and mm -hmm. that sort of playful, self aware attitude we've had. So we just continued that, not being aware that we were talking to people that would find it distasteful. Well, his argument, I'm not saying it's a good one or not, but his argument was like, the people who followed us from the beginning would not find this distasteful. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. But obviously that backfired. And I do think, um, I can see where he's coming from, like kind of pithy, like, hey, let's just make light of this. Yeah. But I guess, yeah, I guess people don't find that entertaining. Well, I, I again, you know, you make a good point and I, and I agree. I agree with the, everything around that. I think, um, you know, I, I'm sure his audience did not find it distasteful. I mean, even the people in that space, like, don't find that distasteful, right? Yeah. I think, um, if anything, um, game de developers as a whole find this Epic Game Store situation to be, um, in some ways, laughable, in some ways, toxic, and um, um, kind of uh, telling of these entitled children that are gamers. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that there is uh, definitely a a disconnect right with those people and the people that purchase games yeah right and um and so you know i don't think he's wrong like i, I think that that's understandable but you know and i and i think my um being a marketer and having been a marketer for uh the last 10 years right uh maybe i'm slanted in this because i get into this with people in my own business right mm -hmm. at my own work where we have content creators that want to argue on social media yep. about how their article is correct and the people lashing out at their article are fucking idiots or right wingers or, you know, like yeah, whatever it is, whatever it is. And um, I remind them that their job is to sell fucking computers, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you're not here to be right. You're not here to prove your point. You're here to sell computers, right? And or whatever it is you're selling. Yeah, yeah. Right. And my whole thing is these people are here to sell games, mm -hmm. right? Through the Epic Game Store. And their strategy should be based around that. Uh, do I think it's right how they were treated? No. Do I think it was inevitable through their through their tone how they would get responded to? Absolutely. I would have if you showed me there were if you showed me what they were going to put out to the world yeah. to announce this very unpopular thing, I'd be like, I hope you're ready for this. Yeah, be like, why are you doing it this way? Yeah, like you are going to get crucified yeah. for doing this. And that's fine. Like, I think there's value in that, actually. Yeah, that's the other side you of know? this, right? Like, we're talking about is, you know, I don't know. This sucks. And like you said, obviously, the harassment, all that is unequivocally ridiculous and mm -hmm. terrible. But that said, you know, we're talking about this game. We certainly wouldn't have been talking about if, yeah. if this hadn't happened. So I wonder from a pure like step even further back i wonder if from a marketing perspective i don't think they know it's on purpose that seems like i don't think they did yeah i think tim sweeney's down for it yeah yeah i guess that's what i mean like being like oh that was a huge mistake but fuck it yeah 
Yeah, I think, you know, because even Tim Sweeney kind of posted some Twitter posts to kind of double down yeah. on this kind of rivalry, right? And, you know, it, it really takes me back to a lot of kind of this adversarial relationship Tim, Tim Sweeney has really cultivated with Steam yeah. openly, right? Yeah. In his... Uh, in the way he pursues exclusives and the way he talks about pursuing those exclusives, he's very clearly attacking uh, Steam and its its business platform, right? And this is no secret. Yeah, yeah, for right. Sure. And I think um, he'd be the first to admit that. Yeah, and Steam has a fandom, for better or worse. I don't know if marketplaces should have fandoms, but they do. Steam has a fandom, and they feel uh, slighted by this, right? And some for some reason, right? <laughs> some dumbass reason. For some stupid reason, <laughs> they feel slighted by this. And I like Steam. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I like Steam too. I also I, hated Steam when it came out. <laughs> yeah, I have no. Yeah, I, I have a shitload of games in Steam. I also don't really like the Epic Game Store. All I know is neither here nor there. I've used the Epic Game Store. I've used it every week to download their free game, and that is all I've used it for. But I have to say, I, sometimes I look at the library. I'm like, shit, I got a lot of free games. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I did install What Remains of Edith Finch from it, and it worked fine. So. That's yeah. my, my experience with Epic Store has been nothing but positive, but to be fair, I've used it for its intended purpose precisely once. So, yeah, And to be fair, I haven't used the Epic Game Store in quite a long time. It yeah. could be much better than why I use it in the past. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's what I mean. Like, I'm not... Yeah, we don't give a shit. I don't have a dog yeah, in yeah, this yeah, no, fight for sure. at all. Um, I, think it's, I think it is ignorant and strange to try and bury your head in the sand and pretend like this reality is somehow wrong... So it like, so it's not valid or doesn't exist, right? I think there's this, I think there's this running current in this type of uh, industry and marketplace uh, of like, I mean, to use it like a postmodern um, kind of viewpoint that uh, that the real things that are happening right now are uh, somehow profane and inappropriate. So the the, the response is. These shouldn't exist in the world, so we don't have to. Um, we don't have to work from a standpoint that that they they need to be. I don't even want to say catered to, but accounted for. Yeah. In how we present ourselves, how we sell our products, um, how we interact with the world, and um, that's a bad idea. You know, like uh, from my standpoint, from a uh, from a marketing standpoint, uh, you know, it's funny. Some of the people that. I mean, I got into it on Twitter <laughs> with Rami Ishmael, who's a pretty prominent indie developer. Matt Piscatello was chiming in. Like, I got a lot of people clapping back on me for saying that. <laughs> and um, and I just found it so strange that these people were all kind of rallying around this idea that um, because the response was inappropriate, that you somehow weren't allowed to um, look for the root cause, yeah. right? To kind of... Uh, have some reflection and some discovery. I mean, my I've always kind of lived under this premise that you can only control yourself, right? Like 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 you're you're in control of your destiny and what happens. And um and you can cater that. Like you're allowed to uh kind of you're allowed to shape that and present that however you want to. And they made a choice and obviously they they personally, at least by their statements, weren't happy with the outcome of that choice. Yeah. And I think they would do it differently if they did it again. Yeah, I mean I think I think if they had known they were gonna get, you know, death threats and they probably they I doubt they accounted for that. I'm surprised they didn't, to be honest with you. I, fair enough. But I also think like it is pretty an astonishing that they'd even have to consider that. I don't think so. You think it's it should be like normalized that death threats and rape threats and like murder threats are just a I don't totally think it should be. I think it it is the re- I think it's been the reality of this world for quite a long time. No, no, fair enough. I guess I mean more right. like I could see how they would not have accounted for that. I mean, I guess if I read that I would be like people are going to fucking go nuts. Yeah. Right? And So pe- who is it that's going nuts, do you think? Like who is it that is so mad? And, you know, of course it varies, but you know, like who's sending the death threats? Like what kind of person do you think that is? Oh, teenagers, early twenties, yeah. um, you know, kind of, and they're mad cause, cause they hate Epic store. No, I don't think they're even mad. I'll be honest. I don't think this comes out of some, um, real like desire for fury. Ch- yeah. I don't think this is a righteous fury. I don't think yeah. this is some kind of, uh, movement of, uh, supremacy or or, or right wing thought. You know what no, I mean? Not even. It's more just like I think it's 
fucking trolls, kids lashing out because because they just want someone to acknowledge them. You know what I mean? I think yeah. this is a way. This is an opportunity for them to be acknowledged and right? to, like you said, to feel like you know their friends are doing. They're one up in each other, and yeah, I, I could see how that could happen. If you're 15 and you feel like the world is against you and the rules suck and no girls want to fuck you, yeah, and your friends are shitty and your parents kind of hate you. <laughs> And you write this fucking shitty ass tweet and Kotaku publishes it. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm changing the rules. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, that's true. And yeah, in 10 years, you'll be super embarrassed. But, at, but in the moment, it feels, I could see how that would feel great. In 10 years, no one will know. No, you know what true, I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the, that's the, that's the real crime of it. Right. And, and not a crime by this fucking idiot kid. Idiot kids are everywhere. It's, it's this like, you know, I, I don't want to talk about politics on here, but we are marketing and hopelessness in this country and in this world right now in a way that is so dangerous and so volatile. Yeah. Right. And I think this is just another clear example of it. No, I, when you were talking about it, 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 there is a lot of parallels there. And I agree. I don't want to get into, you know, the awful yeah. shit that's been happening, but there is a lot of crossover in terms of like there. Yeah. There's definitely something at the core of that, that I think is manifesting in different ways. And it is. I do agree that it's not constructive to pretend it doesn't exist yeah. or to be shocked when it's like, wait, what? That's there? Yeah, we are trading in hopelessness and we are um, pretending that like uh, like closing your eyes to it or admonishing it is somehow the answer. Yeah, saying like, right? that's bad. It shouldn't exist. Yeah. It, it does not go away that way. No, it's like... That's saying, I mean, like capitulating to it and and, you know, that's also not an option. No, and that's what I mean. You don't... There, there are other, there are a million gray places in between capitulation oh, yeah, for sure. and ignorance. You know what I mean? And any of those could be, I think, a valid approach. And I think the most valid approach is uh, engagement. Yeah. No, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I don't think everyone has the time to. I don't expect these developers to engage with these rude people. And, you know, that's not their job. But I think if, if your goal is to... Um, to change hearts, right? If your goal is to make the world better, right? If if that's if you want the world to be a better place, you need to make it a better place, right? And that's what you're doing every day on Twitter. Well, I'm not, obviously, <laughs> right? No, but I, I hear you. I don't feel like it's any any person's duty to make the world a better place, right? I'm I'm very pragmatic in that sense that you know I don't think it's their job. I don't think it's anyone's job to change the world, but then accept that this is the world you're living in, right? Because burying your head. And 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 um, and trying to score points on your your admonishment of these people is not helping, right? And trying to dunk on them in your um, you know, in your announcements is not helping either. Yeah, it was a pretty colossal miscalculation, I think. No, I mean, you know, we live in this world where, like I said, we market and hopeless, like dunking on people. You know, as shitty as it is, I tweet. I'm not big on. I got like a hundred fucking Twitter followers. I'm not a big Twitter person. But like, you know, getting in this stupid fucking argument on Twitter, I've gotten more engagement in two days yeah. than my entire Twitter career, Yeah. right? And it's because I fucking got spicy with some fucking people. You yeah. know what I mean? I didn't, it's not constructive what's going on. You know what I mean? Because it turned into people calling me a fucking toxic asshole yeah. and me saying you're no better than they are. And you know what I mean? And it's like back and forth, back and yep. forth. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait. What yeah. the hell just happened? What What is this discourse? Yeah, and you know, and even some guy, he's, you know, and the guy that said, like, this just started happening two years ago. It's like, no, it had, like, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this, in my adult experience, this was happening in, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s on IRC and V bulletin boards where people were getting, uh, we used to call it, uh, we didn't call it doxing, we call it nexting back then, right? Where people were getting nexted and fired from their jobs, right? Because you'd find out they worked at a fucking electronics boutique, right? And you'd call the electronics boutique and tell them that, you know, this guy uploaded fucking porn or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like something yeah. stupid. Like this kind of shit's been happening forever, right? Anti-Semitism has been like this rampant internet fucking joke for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Right? And to pretend like it's just some new political movement is not only wrong, it's so egotistical. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I think that's the problem is like... This kind of sheltered group of like of of current gen game developers, right, see themselves as this um, 
cabal of like of like thought and reason and that like all of these experiences they have are new you yeah. know it's it's like a very I can't believe this has never happened anymore. Yeah, I can't believe this, this never, is only happening to us. This is only we, you know, it sucks that we started making games in the in the birth of of toxicity and you know and yeah. and bad working conditions and you know like like what did our our parents didn't deal with this and it's like your parents dealt with a lot right as someone yeah. who's almost who's approaching forty, I can tell you as long as I've been around these things have existed, uh, people have been exploited. People have been shitty. People make death threats over dumb people, shit. Yeah. They used to call your phone at home and crank call you and be like, I'm coming to fucking kill your fan. Right. You know what I mean? Like that shit used to happen all the time. I remember being fucking 12 and some neighborhood asshole kid would call your house and say something fucking scary. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it, it shit happens. Like, um, you know, I just think it's so crazy. And I initially did not want to talk about this on here because I feel like <laughs> it paints me as a very uh, unempathetic uh, person. And I will admit I'm a little too pragmatic in these types of situations. Yeah. And I feel like um, I feel like creative types are definitely more sensitive to this. Right. And I think that that's I think that's real. I don't think that they approach these things with that kind of a mindset. Well, I think that's part of the one of the casualties of, of this this way we not you and I, but the way these conversations go down is that it does become an us or them thing. Mm-hmm. And that sucks because this is a great example of like, like you and I, I think made it very clear, abundantly clear, threatening to kill someone because they, for any reason, yeah, other than, you know, something absolutely catastrophic. No, it doesn't matter. I, I beyond would say the pale. So yeah, it's and, always but, inappropriate. But the point is like, so that means it, we cannot even have the conversation other than that because they'll say like, are you legitimizing their position? Yeah. And it's like, I'm not legitimizing their action or their position. That said, like pretending they don't exist is silly. So it is more of a, you can't even have a discussion about it without looking callous or like you don't care that there were death threats. Mm-hmm. But obviously that almost is just so like beyond the pale. It, go, it should go without saying. And I, and I don't think anyone's making the argument like, no, these guys have a really good point. Yeah. They fucking don't have a good point. Of course they don't. But I think, um, doing something like this and per- like you said i think it's valid to say pretending these people don't exist and that they haven't always existed and yes again not to get political but if you look at what's going on right now in our world those people exist whether yeah. they're you know here or there or if it's sending death threats about epic or whatever it is they're doing those people will always exist and pretending they don't and then being shocked when like what those people are here is yeah. is a little it's definitely mysterious. i'll tell you this like and you know we weren't going to say anything about this but you know, two people shot up fucking two distinct groups of people, and it was like fucking Twitter in real life. Yeah, it was two opposing political ideologies, right? Just literally clapping back in the worst fucking way yeah. of, of imaginable. Tragic, like just so fucking tragic, so wasteful, such a waste of energy and such a, a waste of human life, right? And just so sad. And it's like all I could think of seeing that is like, well, this is just like fucking Twitter. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, that's I guess my point is it yeah. is it's the same core. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same thing I felt when I saw these people say this shitty stuff to these game developers. Yeah. They don't deserve it, but it's like, you know, this is fucking Twitter in real life, man. Yeah, it's it's hopelessness, right? Yeah. And it's like, and that all comes from the same place. It all comes from the same fucking hopeless place, right? So let's give people fucking hope out there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. No, I agree. Like all I want for this world, a little bit of hope, a little bit of fucking hope, a little bit of hope gets people places. Let's love each other. When you see someone that is shitty and down, you know, just tell them it's all right, man. Fucking relax. It, yeah, it's cool, man. Here's like, some hope. Here's some hope. You know, we're all loved in this world. We all got at least a little bit of love for each other. Yeah. You know, like let's spread that around. Let's no, not clap back. Right. Yeah. Let's try and have reasonable discussions about why why things happen, why they're affecting us, why we feel the way we do, and why we react the way we do. Yeah. Right? And I think when we do that, and, you know, we all are guilty of it. No, of course. Right? I think that's that's what we need to admit. Like, you know, this guy, like, on Twitter, when he's clapping back at me, he's like, well, this is, I, this is in the, your response, this was in a different thread or something. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, He's like, oh, you like a fucking idiot, and I'm like, no, yeah, I was, I was wrong. Like, that's not, oh, that's that's okay, you yeah. know, like, like it's fine, it's fine to be wrong, yeah, like it's fine, and you know what I mean, like you, fine, you scored points, I guess, like, 
You know, it's just so strange that that's that's the dialogue. It's just like, oh, I fucking got you, bro. You know, it's you're just done. like I won. You're done. You're done. Look at all these people think you're a fucking idiot. It's just like, yeah, I made a mistake, man. Like it's fine. Like yeah. I'm okay with it. You know, and it's just so unacceptable. I yeah, guess that's interesting. It's so it's so unacceptable, and uh, you know, I, I really, I really don't like that we're at that place where where I feel like these things that were so fringe or so at least sheltered from the mainstream have become so normalized and so glorified. Right. Yeah. And, and not just glorified by like, you know, you would think that like these fringe right wing storm front groups would be the ones glorifying this, but it's mainstream media. You know yeah. what I mean? It's the Kotaku's of the world, like that yeah. are, that are really playing into this hand and, and selling this piecemeal for ad revenue. And it's, it's not. And again, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that in necessarily. It's no, I just mean, that yeah. thing of when you pretend like you have the moral high ground. And again, we're not comparing Kotaku to fucking Stormfront. Obviously. No, of course not. But, but that's the point is like, it's the same thing of, yeah, you're, you know. Yeah. The comparison I was making that Stormfront is extreme and you'd expect this type of extreme behavior yeah. for, but I think that the, the people that are selling this, the, the, the insidious way these things get sold are through mundane means. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's, I was actually talking this about work. It's like, you know, the bigot that screams about his bigotry is easy to laugh at and ignore. It's the one who never says anything, yeah. but you know, but is, but is always kind of playing his, his game that is, that is truly insidious and dangerous. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's what we're getting to with this, like, just coverage of everything. Is yeah. it's, it's so Twitter in general is just so based in like, I don't know. Can you fucking argue with people? Yeah. Just gonna make people mad. Let's run it. You know, like, yeah, no, I hear you, but that's all I got to say about that. Well, that's it. I feel like I just went off for like 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. And again, we're not going to get into the political thing. Ban the guns. Do you it's think video games <laughs> fault? Do you think uh, violent video games make people into mass murderers? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's what's so funny about this. Like, if it was a conversation about like the way we present guns and violence in games and art in general, that would be a discussion worth having. Yeah. But this the idea that it's like, well, it's probably it's gotta be video games, right? Well, and this again, like, is such a a laugh to me, right? It's like the whole violent video games thing, which we weren't gonna talk about either guns and games. But like, you know, it's all these memes of like, oh, they say gun, you know, like the guns and violent video games, and it's like the little cat with the it's yeah. like, oh, I'm just over there's here. Some, there's some funny memes. I'm just that. over here eating sweet rolls in Skyrim. Play, playing Man- Animal Crossing. Yeah, it's like you're cutting people's fucking heads off in Skyrim too, buddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like once again, it's the same thing of like, I can't admit any of the reality of the situation. That's what's so frustrating. I need to embrace the fringe, this yeah. is ridiculous side of it. Yeah. And it's like, I, I mean, I think that I don't think we need to regulate violence out of video games because... I believe games are like an expression of art. I think we need to look at how society as a whole uh, fetishizes violence. For sure. But right? that's not the discussion anyone wants to have. No. And it's so. That's what's so irritating. Yeah. It's like. I agree. It's like, hey, is this part, a, a part of a holistic an examination of, you know, the core of what America is? Yeah. Video games definitely and violence are, are a part of that for sure. And to pretend they're not is silly. But no one's trying to have that conversation. Yeah, I mean, it's violence in video games is a symptom. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And just like Antifa and Donald Trump and all this, all the shit that makes anyone mad in the world, it's a symptom. No, that's what I find so funny. It's, it's like, not the, it's, it's coming not, from the same place. It's not the disease. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the disease is, is so complex. Yeah. And it's so. The disease is not something that'd be fun to talk about on Twitter and you would not get upvotes or likes for. So no. why the fuck would you even bother? Yeah, no one would give you upvotes for. Having a, yeah. For having a real because it would require actual effort and it would require actual like yeah it would require years of actual conversation and respect between people to get to anywhere and we're so far away from having that oh we're so far away and that you know except on this wonderful podcast that we do yeah we're really changing the fucking world I think right this now. is really the uh, last bastion of, of it might uh, be our last episode <laughs> conversation yeah <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're about to get canceled after this but yeah. well I'm in charge so I'm the only one that can cancel us so we're in good shape sweet. We get a renewal. Yeah, I'll renew us for one more season. <laughs> How long are the seasons? I don't know, hundred episodes. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. 
All right, you heard it here first, folks. We're getting we're getting through season hundred or season one. One twenty nine. That's what we yeah, were there promised we go. to. That's what we got. That's what we got to start talking. Um, yeah, I feel like we've gone on too long about this, but uh, yeah, I think my my much my final thought on all of this is, you know, I hope you come away from this kind of talk, just kind of hoping to have like reasonable discussions about things that you feel are important. You know what I mean? Um, I think hatefulness and, um, and, and vitriol and all these things come from a place of people feeling like they are not heard. Right. And I think it's, it's sad people just seeking, uh, acknowledgement. Right. And if we just acknowledge them, if we acknowledge people for things that aren't bad and acknowledge them for the things they're trying to achieve in the world, then um, I think we can stop people from seeking such dire ways to be acknowledged. Yeah, right? I agree with that. So just say good morning to the person that you don't say good morning to, right? Say thank you to the person that holds the door, right? And and for your own accountability. And for your own accountability. Like, don't be a fucking asshole. And too. don't, yeah, don't be an asshole. But you know, and being sad is not an excuse to be a dickhead. Well, I think it goes both ways, right? I think saying thank you and saying good morning, and you know, I noticed in my personal life, like the more I tried, the more you try to engage and uh, and enrich the lives of other people, the more you enrich your own life. Oh yeah, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, that's so, old. That's old wisdom. Yeah, that's it's very true. Old wisdom, right? So even if you're the person that needs attention that's looking for someone to acknowledge you that doesn't want to feel like a piece of shit that no one wants to fuck and no one loves. Right. Just try and love some people. Yeah. Right. With, with expecting nothing back and it will come back to you. Yeah. I think that's fair to say, you know, I don't think anyone's ever regretted that. No, no. You know, no one's ever regretted like trying to be more polite and more friendly and putting more positivity in the world. Yeah. It always works. It all a hundred percent of the time it works because you're your own motivation. You know what I mean? And you know what doesn't make the world a better place? Tech Yeah Podcast. <laughs> no. Come oh. on. Oh. I think we're a bastion of positivity. Sort of. If you ever find yourself sending a death threat for any reason, uh, just don't. It's you're not. It's not a good idea. You can send I it to us. I don't care if... Yeah, that's true. You can send all the death threats you want to us. We're fine with it. But I don't, it doesn't matter. It's not, gonna, it's not a good idea. <laughs> it's not going to get you what you want. I promise. If you ever want to spurg out on anything, I yeah. don't care if it's a game developer, if it's Epic Game Store, if it's... Uh, you know, bestbuy.com for not shipping your copy of Shenmue 2 in time. Um, <laughs> whatever it is, just send it to us and I'm going to do my best to reach out and see what's going on. Yeah, I think that's fair. We're pragmatic right. people. We could, uh, I'd be happy to talk to anyone about anything. I got a little time to write a couple emails. If you send me threats like, fuck you, faggot, or whatever, I'll respond with, I hope you're having a better day today than yeah. you were yesterday. Yeah. Right. I think that's the least I could do if you took it, if you listened to a whole hour and 15 <laughs> minutes of this shit we just did. <laughs> well, if you did, we appreciate it. And seriously, it would be, it's always great to hear from you guys. Yeah, for and sure. And even if it's, you know, this is a complex shit we're talking about here. So by all means, anything you want to talk about. Yeah, I had some crazy person message me on YouTube this week saying that they liked the Max Payne movie. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people did. It made a bunch of money. It was insane. I was like, what? But my response was... I'm cool. happy you did. We're actually idiots. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> nice. you're right and we're wrong. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, but with that, we're going to close it up because we've been going for too long. But we love you guys. If you have any thoughts, uh, feel free to share them with us. If you want to call me a fucking asshole. Hey, I, you're a fucking asshole. I kind of am. Uh, <laughs> feel free. You can leave it in, uh, in the comments or at techyapodcast.com. I yeah, will promise I will read them there. and I will acknowledge them. Um, or techyapodcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And just so y'all know, we're going to continue our video series with a little uh, fighting game movie. I loved this movie. I know. I can't wait to talk to you about it. I know. It's uh, Dead or Alive, so you guys are going to want to check that out. Watch the movie. Well. Watch it. Don't watch the movie. I would say if you're my... How about this? Watch our video and then make up your mind, because I think we're going to have different opinions on it. I think if you're like in your mid-30s or older, this movie will trigger nostalgia of just like what it was like to be 14. Yeah. Yeah. We'll save it for the video. All right. (laughs) Love you guys. Uh, Go play some games. Take care, guys. Bye.